I think the importance of including goal 14 in the sustainable development goals is very very significant and very historic as well uh, for the first time in the history of sustainable development that we've in, in, uh, recognized or acknowledged the importance of oceans and marine and coastal ecosystems to the livelihoods of millions or billions of people who rely on these resources for their livelihoods uh, but at the same time their general life support services um, as well uh, as opposed to the MDGs, for instance, where the importance of oceans or the environment in general has been very marginal at this point in time, in the post-2015 era, oceans have been given um, due um, recognition and uh, they will surely, this will enable uh, the ecosystems in question here, which are the marine and coastal uh, ecosystems, to um, receive sufficient attention from both uh, policy makers and other stakeholders uh, including users as well and there are two ways or two dimensions to this uh, debate as well one is um, how does the achievement of goal 14 and its targets would contribute towards achieving the other goals um, and targets as well uh, for instance achieving uh, sustainable management of marine and coastal ecosystems, including fisheries, would certainly contribute towards achieving food security, sustainable production and consumption, and uh, biodiversity conservation, and so on and so forth, which are all sufficiently addressed in other goals and targets. And likewise, or the flip fork side of the coin, is how would the achievement of the other 16 goals and targets would I contribute towards uh, achieving uh, or delivering on goal 14 in targets as well. At the same time, we need to make sure that we deliver on the other uh, 16 goals as well because they all come together um, to uh, ensure uh, a sustain sustainable um, economies and uh, livelihoods for the current generation and the future generation as well. So the most important question here is, how do we transition from the unsustainable and undesirable state of affairs towards more sustainable use of uh, marine and coastal ecosystems? So to, or to transition from the undesirable state towards the more desirable future state of these resources, one of the most important aspects is we need to make sufficient investment towards these resources to enhance their provisioning and non-provisioning services. Um, to do so, we do need to make an economic appraisal of the significance of these resources for both livelihoods and the, our economic uh, systems as well. And that would help us to make a very compelling case to decision makers and policy makers on why they need to make sufficient investment towards uh, enhancing the, um, the provisioning capacities of uh, these resources. Having said that, transitioning from the unsustainable use of uh, marine and coastal ecosystem towards a more desirable future state of uh, sustainable management of uh, these resources is going to have some cost implications. Therefore, one of the most critical and very important questions, especially for national governments, uh, becomes um, the issue of finance. A, where is the finance is going to come from? And uh, two, how is that finance going to reach, uh, to reach, to reach uh, the, the needy or the most vulnerable communities in all those countries as well? Uh, therefore, uh, we do need to all come together and work together, uh, ensuring there is a sustainable financial resource, be it from uh, uh, national fiscal reforms, for instance, or through um, ODA, uh, money or harnessing market forces or the private sector initiatives as well uh, where we can capitalize on all those three uh, dimensions of finance uh, and make sure there is a sufficient resource available out there to ensure the implementation of um, uh, these uh, goals and, and targets and as I, as I said as well the most important thing is how to make sure these finance uh, this finance reach uh, the most needy or the most vulnerable section of the society and um, as a result uh, we at IID uh, in collaboration with like-minded organization will be working on ensuring 
financial inclusion uh, in the post-2015 era as well. In terms of uh, inclusion, meaning A, is how to ensure that these communities have access to financial resources, not any kind of financial resources, but we emphasize on the need to um, to tailor sort of uh, a, a more suitable and affordable uh, source of finance for uh, these communities so that they would be able to uh, benefit from um, both employment uh, and income opportunities and liberate themselves from the poverty trap that the, most of these resources suffer from. I think one of the most important things as we implement these goals and targets is um, uh, uh, to use the uh, language of the Open Working Group, so quote unquote, uh, not leaving anyone behind, is a very, very important um, aspect here. We need to assess who are the winners and losers uh, in be between now and end of 2030 as we implement, as we work towards implementation of these goals and targets. And I think it's very, very important and very critical that uh, we uh, make uh, the work that we do towards achieving these goals and targets become more equitable and more inclusive uh, so that um, the marginalised or the, the most needy sections of the society um, benefit and do not lose out.